Welcome to Expert Views on ADR Ever, a podcast about simplifying alternative dispute resolution ADR in a bid to attract more and more users to settle their disputes or conflict with these alternatives, which includes mediation, arbitration, adjudication, negotiation, conciliation, and early neutral evaluation. In simple, in simple terms, ADR is taken to cover alternatives to litigation. Uh, my name is Chinwe Stella Ebonike, PhD in ADR from the University of Brighton, United Kingdom. And I'm very excited to welcome Professor David Larson, a professor of law at the Mitchell Hamline School of Law and senior fellow at the Dispute Resolution Institute. He has been involved with online dispute resolution ADR, ODR, since 1999 and is the system designer helping create an ODR platform for the New York State Unified Court System. David is currently the chair of the American Bar Association section of dispute resolution and co-chair of the section's ODR standards task force. He has made more than 170 professional presentations in 10 different countries and has 60 publications. He teaches arbitration law, arbitration skills, disability, employment law, employment discrimination law, labor law thoughts and online dispute resolution ODR for the 21st century. Welcome to the show, Professor Larson. It is an honor to have you again on EVA. Oh, well, thank, you for, thank you for the invitation. Uh, thanks for coming. All right, so without further ado, uh, let me go straight to the question. So what is the story so far with the small claims ODR platform in um, New York? I'm smiling because there's a long story. Um, I started working with New York in October of 2016. Okay. So little did I think that as we are now in March of 2022, um, yeah. I'd still be working with, with New York. Um, the um, Permanent Commission on Access to Justice in New York recognized that there is a serious problem with credit card debt collection cases, that uh, debtors were not appearing in court, that more than 90% of the cases were simple, simply default judgments. Mm -hmm. um, and that was for a variety of reasons. It wasn't clear that they were being served by the summons. Um, there's all kinds of obstacles to getting to court in Manhattan. Now it's difficult. It's, it's not like it is in Minnesota where you can just drive up and park. Um, the transportation is a challenge. Um, okay. Maybe trying to get vacation is a challenge, mm -hmm. but there are all kinds of challenges. So, so the, in the, the impetus, the initial part was, let's try and fix credit card debt collection. Okay, okay, thank you. So number two question is, in your article titled, um, Designing a State Court Small Claims ODR System, Hitting a Moving Target in New York During a Pandemic, you mentioned parties auto-populated stipulation of settlement. Um, the term is relatively new. What, what does it mean and how does it work? Yeah, so the idea is we're going to try and reduce the need for human intervention as much as possible. We'd like the platform to do as much as it can independently. So the way we've designed it is that the first stage, the first interaction is a blind bidding process where the parties exchange bids and we'll see whether or not there's an overlap, which the system will automatically recognize. Mm -hmm. If there is, then the parties have an opportunity to do a structured settlement to decide the terms of how this amount will be paid and how frequently, what will be the amount of each payment, what are the consequences if you miss a payment. And so there's mm -hmm. options you can choose as you go along. So you're clicking buttons as to what you'd like to choose. So you've got your amount, you've got your separate questions answered. Now the next step is what, hap what happens? Well, the software will take all of that information and put it into a settlement agreement. Um, uh, so the parties, of course, will have the opportunity to read what's being proposed, but all the details about how this um, settlement is going to be um, actually implemented uh, will be auto-populated in okay. the agreement. You don't have to do it manually. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's um, kind of um, benefits of um, using ODR because it makes it faster and easier for parties to, you know, um, assess. Yeah, well, that's the dream. You know, that's the hope. 
<laughs> oh, okay, we'll get there. You know, get to that question. Okay, so thank you. So the number three question is how does the credit debt collection audio platform function? How does it work? Okay, so I've mentioned it's a long story. Yeah. So we were going to try and improve the situation with credit card debt collection. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first met with the commission, I'm the American Bar Association liaison to the New York Unified State Court System. So I'm coming in as a kind of an outsider, as a consultant. And when I learned that they wanted to do credit card debt collection, I said, don't do credit card debt collection. It's too complicated. It's too heavily regulated. You yeah. have federal legislation, you have state legislation, you have county legislation, you have municipal legislation. Yeah. It's There's so many levels and so much regulation, which makes sense because it's a delicate issue, but it's going to be really hard to move that process online with all those protections that exist. Yeah. But the feeling was, well, this is a real problem in New York, but we've got to do something about it. And let's try online dispute resolution. So we spent a long time designing a very detailed ODR process to try and capture all the consumer protections that exist and all the different regulation. And uh, after a couple of years working on that, we um, started to, and all along we contacted legal advocates uh, to make sure everybody's on board. We tried to reach out to everyone we could think of that might have an interest in this, in this credit card debt collection situation. And sort of at the 11th hour, there was a small group of legal advocates that thought that it would be catastrophic to put consumers in virtual spaces with, with debt holders. And mm -hmm. it, the imbalance would be too great. Um, one of the complicating things was that New York wasn't designing its own software program. They're gonna request proposals from vendors, commercial vendors. So they had to do a public request for proposals process. The feeling was if we give out the platform in its entirely, entirety, to uh, you know, even the legal advocates, we will taint the request for proposals process because some people will be able to say, well, they got the proposal first. We, we, they got an advantage. They could think about it, look at it. Um, so we weren't ever able to give the entire procedure that had a lot of hyperlinks and off ramps to legal services. We built in all kinds of consumer protection, but because there was a concern that if we showed everything and just turned over the platform to another group, then our request for proposal process would be tainted by giving someone an advantage. So we weren't able to do that. We could just kind of summarize what we were trying to do. And the response was that we don't completely understand what you're doing and we think it's problematic and uh, we're gonna fight it. So, and they did. They, they really went to their elected officials said, don't ever do this, you gotta stop it. Put a lot of pressure on people in the court system. Um, in state government, city government, and they were able to actually stop the implementation of the credit card debt collection program. So at that point, we had done a lot of work. We had this platform. So we thought, well, what are you going to do now? And we thought that, well, let's do small claims, which actually is what I suggested in October of 2016. So uh, we kind of pivoted to small claims, which is actually much easier to do because mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about as much consumer protection. Although I will say we have built in a lot of consumer protection into our platform. But so the credit card debt collection ODR platform was never implemented. It's still there. Uh, you know, I think the day may come where it will be implemented. Yeah. But um, but right now we have a now we have a small claims platform, which is which is a little simpler. Yeah. All right. So what do you think has this um, small claims um, platform has it enhanced access to justice? As I said, I'm going to come back to this question. So in yeah. the present year, you know. Well, you know, the, I, think the, I think the substantive legal area is mm -hmm. simpler to understand and simpler to manage, which mm -hmm. is not to say that this is a simple process. Um, there still have been a lot of challenges. We went live um, in January of, uh, of this year. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, actually in January of 2021, I think, um, we've been live for over a year. And uh, uh, there have still been a lot of challenges making certain that this platform's operating the way it should. One of the one of the concerns was that one of the challenges is that again New York didn't design its own technology and they they're working with a commercial vendor, but we have all kinds of protections built in. Um, we have what we call hard opt out questions. Is there a history of domestic violence? Um, 
we didn't want this one side to have an attorney and the other one. So do you have an attorney representing you, either one of you? Is there an order of protection involved here? And if the answer is yes to any of those questions, they're knocked out. Then we have a whole list of soft opt-out questions. Are you comfortable representing yourself in a, in a virtual environment? Do you have access to the internet? Um, those kinds of questions, do you have a disability or do you have, do you have any kind of, of a challenge that might make it difficult for you um, to communicate in an online environment? And, and we don't ask specifically whether you have a disability. Um, but they're soft opt-out questions. So even if somebody says yes, we give them the option of saying, would you still like to continue? So we built in lots of different things still into this platform. But the challenge is that when you're using commercial off-the-shelf software, they then have to modify that at every stage. And that's been a long process. And we're working with Matterhorn and they've been very agreeable to doing that. It mm -hmm. just takes a lot of time to build that in. So one of the big challenges and one of the things that's delayed the process is making sure that we've customized the software in a way that we provide all the protections that we'd like. All right. Okay, so what are the obstacles you encountered during the formation of this um, initiative or project? Yeah, so that's one of them is making sure that this off the shelf commercial software has been customized mm -hmm. in a way that we want it to be. Um, yeah. One of the big challenges that now that the system is operative is, and I think everybody who has a, I think even, even in a in face-to-face -face court system, but an online system is defend and engagement. Because, I mean, just think about it for a minute. Why, if you, if you never find me, if you never engage with me, I'll never have to pay you. So I really don't want to do this because uh, I don't want to pay. Uh, and that's kind of where you start. Uh, the defendant says, well, how is this in my interest? For some people it is, they'll say, it's in my interest because I'd like to get this off my shoulders. This is a problem, uh, I just as soon get it resolved. So for some defendants, yes, they're, they're ready and willing to engage and, uh, and they'd like to wrap this up as soon as possible. But for others, the feeling is that if I don't engage with the platform, I'll never have to pay. Yeah. And uh, so I'm not gonna do it. And, and that's one of the challenges, I think for any ODR system is to keep, keep the parties engaged. And your system's got to be pretty intuitive because you can lose the claimants also. I mean, if it's hard to figure out and it's hard to follow, it takes a lot of time, yeah. the claimants could will drop off too. So I think one of the big challenges, obstacles is party engagement, keeping people engaged with the software from start to finish. Okay. And um, so what are the advantages and does it have a disadvantage as well? Yeah, well, I think the advantage is that you can do it 24-7. Um, you know, it's, it's asynchronous. So there is an opportunity. Um, for example, I said you do the blind bidding where you exchange offers and demands. Um, you have an opportunity to, to do a structured settlement for all the terms. If you get stuck at any of those points where you just, you can't get an agreement, there is an opportunity to do a, to do a chat, to do a synchronous chat. But for the most part, the system is asynchronous. So one of the big advantages is if you can't get vacation time, which would not have let you go to court uh, mm -hmm. without losing some wages, you can do this in the evening and on weekends. And I think that's that's a huge benefit in terms of access to justice. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so the final question, which is compulsory in this show is, what is your advice for people that want to pursue ADR as a career? Well, you know, it depends on where you are in your career. Um, yeah. uh, if you're just coming out of school, it's very difficult to become a, a neutral for ADR because you don't have any presence in the field. Yeah. So if you're somebody who's new to the field, I think what you need to do is get some experience. And at least in the United States, and I imagine in other places in the world, there's a lot of volunteer community mediation kinds of centers where you can volunteer your services. They'll be more than happy um, to have a volunteer that they don't have to pay, or you could get some very, very valuable, worthwhile experience um, doing volunteer kinds of things. So, um, you know, it still is true in this world, even when we're operating virtually, that networking is important. So uh, uh, my advice also is, for example, I'm chair of the American Bar Association section of this beat resolution. Uh, join that section. We have uh, not just the United States, uh, neutrals involved. We have people from around the world. You can be an international member for a very reduced rate 
But mm -hmm. what that lets you do is you get connected with people that are more established in the field. Um, you have a lot of opportunities for mentorship and learning, and um, that can kind of accelerate your education as and experience as being a neutral. So I would say also get involved with some of the professional associations and organizations that are available to you, because that's, that's another way you can get some of the experience that you need. All right, thank you so much for providing a comprehensive overview of um, the Small Claims ODR platform in New York and the benefits um, and um, of course disadvantages associated um, with it. Um, um, however, I believe that the advantages uh, outweighs the disadvantages. So I would um, always um, say that parties or potential users um, should take on board what you have um, discussed here in, um, you know, opt for um, ADR or ODR, you know, while you know, if they have disputes to settle, they should, you know, take these easier and um, um, so the benefits, you know, associated with ODR instead of, you know, going the, the, the litigation route. So um, I'm so grateful that you agreed to come to the show to, you know, reinstate that and yeah. And, and before we sign off, uh, before we sign off, let me just mention. Yeah, um, thank you. I didn't get a chance to kind of say the whole program. Yes, yes. So in New York, we do this blind bidding where yeah. exchange offers and demand. Yeah. You have an opportunity to talk about the terms. Yeah. Um, you can have a conversation space if it isn't working. Mm -hmm. But if, if you still haven't reached an agreement, there is an opportunity to do an online mediation. So oh. so it's a it's a there's a lot of stages here. Mm -hmm. And uh the online mediation can be synchronous or asynchronous. We work with two community mediation centers who have been trained in online dispute resolution. So uh, the hope is that either through your direct interaction with only the two parties in the software or bringing in the mediator online, that by the end of the day, you will be able to reach some kind of an agreement. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. Thank you so much for adding that as well. All right. Thank you. Because uh, of yeah, this moment, I need to... <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.